But the recent release of the newest installment of Warhammer 40k me and the crew made it a goal to jump onto the sticks and annihilate the bug infestation and secure the Imperium of Man. But with the hype building for the game, the big question is whether the game lands on what fans of the series have wanted or if it falls on its face. Should you buy Space Marine 2 on console? Is it worth diving into the game sooner rather than later? We give the good, the bad, and answer these questions in our final verdict. But first, we have a message from today's sponsor. Do you like fresh ingredients? Yes! Do you struggle planning your meals in a cost-effective manner? Yes! Good thing there's HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Cut back on expensive takeout delivery and get started with HelloFresh. You'll love how fast, easy, and affordable it is to whip up a restaurant quality meal in your own kitchen. Just click on the ingredients you want and HelloFresh will send you a package of fresh ingredients and a delicious meal plan for you to enjoy at your leisure. I really love the fact that I can put my favorite ingredients in every week they send me a full list of meals I can make with it. They are so good and I feel like it's a must if you struggle to plan out meals like me. Click on my link or use my code and get 10 free meals plus free breakfast for life. Go enjoy some fantastic meals and thank you HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. So let's start off with the good. And I think right off the bat, when you think of Warhammer 40K, Space Marine 2, the one of the longest names I've ever seen in a video game before, uh, the good thing that start off with is I really like the way the combat and different methods of playing are. I mean, granted, uh, in the campaign or story missions, the the alts or the your special abilities can be limited to, to be good moves, to bad moves. Uh, I mean, your main character, Titus, definitely has the best of the three having the ability to heal yourself while I, while you're also attacking other people, almost going like Hulkamania or uh, going Super Saiyan, like I've referenced in the streams. Uh, but when you go to that, that Eternal War mode or the Operations mode, those abilities you can pick from are honestly the best I've played in the entirety of what we've done on stream and off stream. And, and I feel like it's just unique, right? And it provides for you a lot of different ways to play uh, I really like the fact that you have all these different types of builds with different type of uh, weapons and, and uh, equipment that you can use that really give you that feeling of I can create my own soldier and kind of go all out any way I want to. I'm um, sure I think some builds are a little OP. Um, I, I mean, I was I was essentially playing as a knight that had a laser sword with plasma uh, plasma pistols and I was just destroying people um, while you do get some jetpack abilities in some other classes, uh, but I feel like for the most part that Eternal War was probably the best part of this game. And I feel like it's all really culminated with that idea of several different classes you can pick from and it kind of changes the way you want to play, right? I feel like the campaign classes are not as diversified. They're very simple. They're, they're not like I feel like when playing the game, we were playing the campaign on stream. I feel like when we got stuck on certain parts of the game, part and i think we all agreed to this that if we were playing as the classes from the eternal war or the operations game modes we would have destroyed people like way faster or sooner because of the fact that their abilities were so much better than what the campaign uh, characters uh, equipments were but even that being the case i enjoyed the fact that i can pick whichever class i wanted in certain scenarios and just enjoy kind of the, the wide array of play styles whether it's the weapons or the equipment or the alts i feel like the, the different methods of playing and the, the standard gameplay of the game was fun you have the more melee combat to weapon combat and it, it has that outrageous feel like we were playing world war z or something so i feel like overall i enjoyed the the method to method combat that was included here um but hockey what is something that you enjoyed yeah, my good uh, from this game comes from uh, its simplicity. So it's kind of an easy to jump into squad based uh, shooter. You're literally running and gunning, you know, the whole game. I think the big positive for me was the over the shoulder gameplay kind of reminded me of uh, Gears of War, which kind of brought me back. I really love that aspect of the game. It kind of gave the game a, a different feeling. Uh, specifically, though, I thought the meleeing and the finishing moves were absolutely outrageous. It was probably one of the funnest, uh, or probably the best part of the game. You know, just ripping through these aliens and kind of a, uh, it, it almost some of the aliens, or at least one of them, looked like a, like a like a raptor or a velociraptor. So it was pretty funny. Uh, you know, just slashing through uh, hordes of 
uh, of, of aliens and it's again it's a good game to play with with friends and, and family so if you have a if you got a squad it's definitely a game to squad up and uh, have some fun in yeah so Angelica, what is the good you liked here yeah i mean it's focusing on the gameplay and that's where they succeeded um you know hockey made a good point it just reminds me of gears of war mixed with you know some of that fallout titan armor aspect it's it's thick it's clunky at times but you know you have some real you know badass moments fighting hordes and hordes of enemies and doing some of those you know the mix of gunplay and the melee aspect where you're parrying you're you know you're doing some heavy strikes light strikes so you can change the way you play and you mentioned those classes it does change the different abilities you have the different primary weapons that you can start off with um so that was all good stuff now missions wise you mentioned the campaign there's six missions um six operations missions to start off the game but you know those missions are long when you play that game you know like they feel like elongated missions they can go for a while so it's not just those quick enders you know those those quick missions that you go in and out um that we've seen some other shooter games these are some long missions so you might look at the original number like six say there's not a lot there but those missions can be very long um and and again it's just a lot of horde fighting you're gonna fight a large swath of people but it makes you feel like a badass so if you like those, you know, gory gun, you know, gory uh, gunplay, you know, gory finishers, this is the kind of game that, that you can definitely jump into. It's simple um, and focus in on the gameplay. When I think about the good, we also have to think about the bad. And, you know, the issue that I had right off the bat is the bugs are horrific, right? And I feel like maybe it's, I, I don't want to be one of those people that's like, well, a PC, it's like, I have seen quite a bit of people kind of come out and rag on uh, the overall problems of the bugs of the game. And, and I've we've experienced it live on stream where we're playing on veteran difficulty, not to you know, tat ourselves or anything, but we're playing a veteran difficulty. We're struggling against a, you know, a, a section of the mission. We need all the resources we can get. Right. And that means grenades. That means stims. That means we need bullets. Right. And there are times where we are trying to grab stems off the wall and we can't grab them, right? Or the grenades. We need refuels on grenades because we need to clear out an area. We well, can't grab them because they're stuck in there and there's nothing you can do about it. I've tried punching it. I've tried shooting it. I've just tried reloading the checkpoint. It doesn't work. So a part of me feels like there's one thing if the game is just like an Elden Ring difficulty and is just is meant to make it so that you can't progress through the game because they want you to learn all the fighting styles and everything. But the way that the difficulty is set up in this game, it's just you're the enemy characters have more damage output and there's not, that's it. There's nothing really that's changing it. So it only makes matters worse when the only thing that can help you progress to the next mission and maybe get to experience more cool events is we need stems, but we have no way of getting them. There's no health regeneration even after checkpoints. And it just makes it where Yes, it just makes it more difficult, not because of their intention, it's because the game's broken and they don't have ways to fix the bugs. Um, Haki, what is it bad for you? Yeah, so I tried to find something maybe a little less generic when it came to my bad. Uh, we always kind of seem to point out the bugs or the frame drops, which this one, this game had a, a decent amount of frame drops, or even the possibility of, uh, you know, repetitiveness, which is a big thing for me, especially if I'm spending and now $70. So, um, you know, I kind of wanted to point to something that I think they could have done better at or, um, you know, could have done better with. And for me, it was the cutscenes and the dialogue. And it was, you know, throughout our Marsman crew playthrough, throughout my solo playthrough, um, you know, the story and the the story being the cutscenes and the dialogue um, kind of just never moved forward for me. It, it seemed to be stagnant. Um, you know, I, I didn't really uh, care about the story. All I wanted to do was kind of get back into, you know, get back into the, uh, you know, the, the fight essentially with the aliens. Um, it was it was weird. Everything seemed a little serious. You know, the Joker says, why? Why so serious? These guys didn't write any comedy, didn't write any type of relief at all into the into this uh, game. It, it seemed very, um, you know, very bland. So that was a, a big thing for me definitely something they could have um you know done better at and maybe with the seasons and, and the story they will you know get better at that portion yeah and uh you know it's really interesting because it has that kind of it's a it's basically a religious militaristic society right and and it's like 
they're mirroring almost like the brothers of steel from fallout like that's kind of what they reminded me of uh, very serious very but even fallout has that little kind of, kind of like you know goofiness a little bit to kind of detach away now granted yeah, you know comedy. you know but granted they might a lot of fans of the series might be like that might break that you know that that feeling right so it's, it's really just depends on kind of the you know the overall feeling of what you're looking for uh, but angelica what is the uh, bad that you felt here yeah, I mean, we're newer to the Warhammer franchise. Um, there's a lot of lore with Warhammer. The story is very, very generic. Um, so if you're going in for an in-depth story, like I, Hockey said, this is not the game for you. Um, but I'm going to piggyback on the bugs and performance. Um, you know, it, it, on the console, it's not good. Um, especially when you're playing at these higher difficulties where the hordes are getting bigger and bigger and damage output is getting stronger and stronger. You, you don't have a lot of time to mess around with bugged uh, items that you need to pick up to survive. And when you get to these higher difficulties, you just need one crew member to die and the game starts over. So, you know, the the error is there's not a lot of room for it. And so, you know, you also have bullets that kind of go, they go through cover. Um, you're pretty much getting shot from anywhere. You know, there's, there's really the physics seem off. At, at times you're like melting into the ground. Um, so there's, there's a lot of performance issues um, that they definitely need a boost on. Um, also, you know, the game is very linear, and I don't have issues with linear games. Um, I, I think there's a strong place for them. But in, in this Warhammer stuff where you get into these open arenas fighting these hordes, and your character can't jump over walls, can't climb anything, even though they're super soldiers, um, which is always frustrating. But there's not a lot of strategic components to this, you know, like it's it's pretty much they put you into an arena or they put you into a corridor and you fight your way out. And I wish that they added a little bit more nuance to fighting these hordes of enemies um, that you can do, whether it's climbing to certain areas um, or, you know, just made, designing the maps where there can just be some more variability um, when you're playing with a group of buddies that you can scheme around and do some of these things. I wish it was just a little bit less linear doesn't mean it has to be an open world, you know, game, but a little bit less linear in their mission design um, would be, to me, beneficial. Yeah, you know, and and um, it's kind of cut goes along with Gears of War, right? We kind of use Gears of War as an earlier connection, and like you know, Gears of War games, the very beginning, even since the first one, they've always said, hey, you can play a different way, and you can go down this pathway and uh, experience it in this varied point of view. Or like even later Gears of War games, they give you multiple ways to get to your location um, to, to make it where, you know, it it makes it feel like it's your path rather than just the fixed yeah, route. Yeah, those are linear games. Too. Yeah, linear games, it's just, but it, you know, it's just little, saying... Little non-linear components. Just to make it more strategic game. where it's like, you know what, you're yeah. a squad of people in, in any sort of combat with squads, you have to plan your attack, you have to go about it. And let's just say it fails one way, you go out a different way. You try a different pathway, right? It almost feels like like there's missions where we had to place bombs on an area and it was like well we just need a sprint to plant all the bombs and just run away yeah. like and you know what i mean sponges and yeah, the same just, pathway yeah. they come out the same way you know like we know how they're going to come out at this moment you know yeah. those kind of things yeah and, and when i get into my final verdict right space marine 2 obviously has a lot of great things to it and the problem that i see is probably one of the most damning things which is performance right and the gameplay working when you need it to work and that was something that bothered me quite a bit because for the most part in our streams and our gameplay i had a great time i think it's a good game to play with people i'm not sure how much of fun it would be if we weren't if we we're just playing by ourselves comparing to what it could be as a group and ai is a struggle ai, 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 AI playing by yourself ai is, is yeah really and 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 i feel like the fact that even even uh playing as a team one of the worst things that that co-op games do is they don't progress people with each other right it's a thing that elden yeah. ring does the thing that other games in the that. past yep. have done and the big difference i look at it when i can make make that connection hell divers brings everyone and says you're all working together you're all getting xp you're all completing these missions together so it's almost like that collaborative real experience while, while space marine 2 is not doing that and it almost makes you feel like well we just did all these missions together but Langello Kill and Hockey, you get nothing, right? You helped Marsman get through these missions, but you all did jack shit. And you have to start from scratch and go after yourself, right? And I feel like that's a problem. It's built to be a co-op game, but you're hurting anyone that plays co-op. That's not good, right? And I feel like 
when I give my score, I'm sure I'll get ragged on it for a little bit, but I'm going to give this a seven and a half. Right. This game is like a solid game to play. It's not an eight. I know that Metacritic's an 83 on PC, Xbox, 82 on PlayStation. It's not that. It's it's an 80 in the 80s game is better than good. Right. And I don't consider this that level. It's a good game. There's a lot of bugs. There's a lot of issues. Uh, they need to fix some of these things. And yeah, seven and a half is above average. In our it's scale. above, and our scale is above average. So it's definitely above average game. I think it's fun to play with people. Um, and I feel like there's so many little things you could do to make this game better, right? Just to make it more consumer friendly. And that the whole part of the gameplay not progressing for everybody else is one of the dumbest things that they could have done. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't care what anyone says. It is a dumb decision. There's no reason to have that in a game that's built around co-op, right? That's the whole point. Um, so when I think about should, whether you should buy this now, later, or not at all, I'm in between buy now or later because by now, yes, there is actually way more content in this game than it is Hell Divers 2. Um, but I do need to see how they handle these bugs. I do need to see, you know, whether or not they, uh, you know, they they capitalize on, you know, maybe the story even gets better. Like, and, and more of these operations are coming out. It's going to maybe liven up a little bit more. But it seems like a pretty standard co-op game. That seems like you can honestly wait for it. Answer. You're in between. I'm going to go final. later. I'm going to say later. I think it honestly, you don't need to yeah. buy this right off the rip. This is not a game that you need to buy now at $70 and be like, oh, I got to play this on day one. Right? You don't need that. Especially when they say that there's, uh, there's going to be four seasons dropping between 2024 and 2025. That means there's more content available and that you might maybe get a bundle and get a season pass added to the game. And maybe that will be worth $70. I still enjoy it. But it's not, it's not in the, in the eighties for me. Seven and a half, buy later. Hockey, what do you think? Yeah, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet because you pretty much said exactly what I was gonna say. I'm a little higher than you. Galactic graded a seven point eight, but it does not reach the eighties for me. Um, again, this is a fun game if you have a squad. If you don't have a squad, it kind of gets knocked down a couple of pegs. But um, you know, the running and gunning, the aliens are cool. The guns. Um, movement's cool, but uh, yeah, the bugs, the hour and a half to two hours that we spent on the last portion of the stream, um, for the people that watched us, we were struggling and it was because we weren't able to pick up things like stims and grenades. So huge problem um, for people that wanna play their game. It is not worth $70 right now. Um, $70 in general is kind of a, a tough swallow, but for a game that's not um, even near uh, I don't want to say near perfect, but uh, it, it's it's definitely playable. But there's there's big bugs that that make it um, very annoying. So I'm at a seven eight. I'm at a buy later as well. Um, you know, after the couple seasons, like Mars Man said, that seventy dollars is probably going to seem a, a little bit uh, a little bit better. But right now, guys, it's at a seven eight, and it's a uh, buy later. Angelica, what is your score? I'm at a 7.5. I'm also at a buy later, unless you're a diehard Warhammer fan. And this is probably, it's a better iteration of the Xbox 360 version on this first Space Marine. So they definitely made improvements from the last time they created this game. Um, but with that being said, as a general audience, as someone who's not deep into Warhammer, I am at a buy later. And it probably runs better on high-end PCs. The PC also on Steam is selling it for $60. For the console users, it's 70 so for a console user with a poor performance, um, it just doesn't feel that worth it right now. Now, like Markman said, there's seasons coming out. The season two is coming at the end of this year, later on, where they're adding PVE missions, a new gun, a new enemy. So there's some things that are being added there that might be more even enticing to add to the pretty solid content that they're providing here. Um, so at that point, it might be, it might change me. I might be a buy now at that moment, but right now I'm at a buy later. It's the bugs, it's the performance, and there's some of those other aspects, like you said, with the co-op stuff, um, that it is a fun game, gameplay to gameplay, but some of the things are really frustrating that bring it down, um, that they do need to patch out. Yeah, but what do you think about Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2? Do you think they were being too harsh? Do you think we're not being harsh enough? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Game on.